Cabo, now that we have different QCIPs, if they open up trading, how do we know what to buy and sell? My guess is, is that if they were to open up trading again, they would probably standardize the QCIP across the board for all the brokerages. There'd be some sort of announcement like, hey guys, uh, everything's going to be 64T9-56, whatever. And then it's just everyone will just change it to that for like the fifth time. Um, there's a lot of brokerages that are using the same one. The QCIP with Fidelity is being used across, I don't know, a dozen or so brokerages. Um, that could signal like these are parties that are going to participate in the same gray market if that if it comes to that. But again, that's more speculation. But if I were to open up a gray market, I'd want to ensure that that uh, folks are at least sharing a QCIP so that when it comes to clearing, it makes it much easier. And there's no there's no there's no confusion because any clearing is going to be broker to broker anyway, and not involve a clearinghouse. So you'd want to at least like know that what someone bought can be used to be put into this account or whatever, or just deleted from existence. Because all right, uh, and I, if I had I've had some people, all right, I'm going to use some of these. I have a whole bunch of like little notes. Let me take some colors. Uh, just take, uh, how about for your colorblind people, I'll try to do blue and green. Hopefully that will work. Does that work? Got three there, three there. Okay. And then I'll just rip them in half and that way we'll have 12 examples. Okay. This is going to be, these are going to be our, our real shares and fake shares. And hopefully I don't know. I'm not colorblind, so I don't know exactly what complementary color, but I was going to try to avoid red and green. Cause I know those are complementary colors and blue and yellow are complementary colors, but green contains both blue and yellow. So uh, hopefully this will stick out to those folks who happen to be colorblind and uh, we can, you know, thinking, thinking of you guys, we, I want to be ADA compliant on this show. All right, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's this hand. And then this hand here. Is that how it's gonna roll? Oops, sorry, gotta set up my whole example. Let's see if this works. Okay, I've got two brokers. Ugh. I need a third hand. <laughs> so I got two brokers, right? I will make green real shares and blue fake shares, right? And we are set to position close only. Um, this position close only. This this is how FINRA fucked up, right? Their concern is that new people will be joining on January 9th, or sorry, December 9th and December 12th. New people will be opening positions in the stock. That's not what happens in position close only. Position close only we have a whole bunch of customers in two different brokerages. They all think they have shares. Some of them have real shares, green ones. Some of them have fake shares, blue ones, right? And if this goes to date of record, then everyone's everyone's got their record. But there's too many shares. There's only six shares available, and we've got, uh, what, 12 shares being represented here? Is that what I'm talking about? One, two, yeah, three, four, five, six. Yep, we've got 12 shares total, and there's only six. That can, that, can, that can pass the data record to receive the next bridge shares. So what happens is only people willing to close their positions will sell. N only people who can buy are brokers force closing positions for short holders. So it's not, it's, it's not the, the hedge fund going, you know what, fine, I'll close my position. It's a broker saying, screw you, I'm taking your money and I'm closing your position. That's how it's rolling. So there's no one opening new positions, only short positions gonna close. So we got these two, these two brokers set up and green's real, blue's fake. Now, if a broker over here wants to replace a fake one with a real one, they would buy a real one. They take that real one, they install it into that account and take this fake share and they delete it from existence. Boom. Now we're down to 11 shares this broker now has a whole bunch of legit on their side, and this one has a whole bunch of fake on their side. Now, if the share they buy is a fake share, right? They buy a fake share, yoink. They delete it from existence, boink. It is gone forever. Now we're down to 10 shares. 
still everyone who 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 owns shares still have a share in their account if they want to keep it. That's how it remains. And let's say uh, this guy over here closes the position. He buys a stock from these dudes. So this stock is transferring over. It replaces a blue share, goes down, bam, we're down to eight shares. And we've got, uh, sorry, nine, nine shares, sorry, nine shares. And we, we've got uh, 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 three fake ones left that have to get closed out. So this broker has an inter, an inter uh, uh, broker deal where this dude sells his share to another person inside of theirs, to, to a, uh, an account side of there, Boom, or it just moves over places, bam. Now we've got everything cleared over here, and we still have uh, two fake shares on this side. And you know we're getting to, getting to zero, the price is getting crazy. They're trying to close this stuff out as much as they can. And now another real share gets sold, sent over here to replace this guy. Uh, now we're down to our, our seven shares. And then finally, someone buys a share, it happens to be an account that's got a synthetic, and they just delete it from existence. It's gone forever. And now we're down to our six shares. And next bridge can give AST six shares. And boom, we're done. We're close. But as it stands now, we have a whole bunch of fake ones in these accounts. Uh, there's no way to give a one for one on anything because there's millions, hundreds of millions billions, I have no idea, fake shares set up inside uh, these brokerages. And because it, the brokers had already told people like, no, we're going to position close only on the ninth. Like that's what we're doing. We're, we are, we are gonna, we're, we're not gonna allow people to open new positions. We're just gonna go close only and that's it. And the finner stepped in and said, just no more trading. We don't know how to deal with this. When the brokers were like, we were already told people we're going to go to position close only. There's gonna be no new positions opening from any of our, any of our customers. They'll only be able to sell in order to close these positions. And Finner took that ability away. So, you know, there, there is, there should have been no problem in, in seeing that through. Um, it's, it's very frustrating to me that Finner had that panic when the brokers already knew how to do it. Position close only is a thing. We have an entire market that's an expert market where you can only position close. That's where Sears was trading forever, where Blockbuster, where Goldman Sachs, or uh, uh, Lehman Brothers and stuff were trading. So uh, the we know how to do that. We have experience doing position close only. So chill out, Finra. Yeah, it is the fact that Ari Rubenstein is one of the market makers and part of FINRA board stand to benefit from halting MMTLP. He's not part of the board specifically. He's part of an advisory committee that advises the FINRA board, which, you know, eh, like, he testified in Congress, like, hey, I'm a member of this board, FINRA, of this particular committee or board at FINRA, but not the board. Uh, and we talk about, you know, high frequency trading or whatever. Uh, he is connected. And... You know, these self-regulatory agencies, I think one of the things from Congress and perhaps the, you know, Retail Investors Protection Act, uh, we would say, you know, these these nonprofits, these self-regulatory agencies cannot pull people from market members. Can't You can't pull them from hedge funds. You can't pull them from banks. You can't pull them from whatever. Like anyone who's going to serve on these boards or in appointed positions or whatever, you bring them from academia, you bring them from research institutions, you bring them from things that are neutral and not involved with manipulating the market directly. Uh, and and you, you find pit bulls. You should have angry, angry pit bulls at all regulators. The job of regulator is to make people's life a living hell if they break the rules. And if you're doing an okay job, pit bulls shouldn't care. People's like, yep, that guy's allowed in here. I don't recognize that guy. I'm gonna fuck him up, and that's that's kind of how it needs to be. It, it should not be, you know, it should be adversarial pretty much at all times. It should like brokers should be like, oh my gosh, Finra is calling again. This is making my life hell. Good, that's what should be happening. It should not be like, hey, Finra, what's up, man? Going golfing later? Cool. Uh, come by the swingers party. I got a white rock outside my house. Um, that should not be the relationship between these things. It should be just 
I hate you. You hate me. Let's fight. And that's that's how it should be regulated. I mean, if you go out fishing without a fishing license, right? The person who's responsible for regulating you is probably a park ranger, uh, a wildlife uh, official, Department of Fish and Wildlife, whatever. Like they didn't they didn't come from a factory trawler to work for a few months as the uh, game warden. And then they go back to the factory trawler again. No, they work as a game warden and they work as a game warden until they retire. They're going to do that government job for 30 years and they're going to retire. And so when you see the game warden's boat, the fish and wildlife guy come along, you're not going like, hey, this is Ted. We worked together on this fishing boat where we legally fished for years together. Everything's fine. We're going to high five and share a stogie and be on his way. We don't do that with other regulatory bodies. When it comes to financial institutions, we allow the horrible pillaging like Viking warriors to become the people regulating the Viking warriors. And uh, it's that, you know, classic fox, fox in the hen house type analogy. 